Hey, welcome back. I thought I'd do one more video of my full self-driving experience the other day here on the Danish roads. And just a few notes here to leave you with before you watch the video, because I really have to explain this once and for all for people. There's many skeptics and, you know, people who doesn't really believe in this technology, doesn't understand how it, how it works, because the idea, the concept is that Tesla has a gigantic fleet by now from over 10 years of producing and selling cars with around eight to nine million cars on the roads right now tesla cars all of these cars have cameras attached around the cars around eight or nine cameras and all of these cameras are then collecting data whenever the car is driving and also being parked around the world this data is fed back into the ai supercomputer at tesla this AI supercomputer then crunches all this data, makes it, makes it make sense, feeds it back into the car. So that means that every car is driving with what's equivalent of thousands of lifetimes of a human driving. Because a human drives around 10 to 15,000 miles per year and over 50 years of driving, I don't know what that is, 15,000 miles times, let's say 50 years of driving, that's 750 thousand miles that's more or less a ballpark of how much a, a normal human being is driving in a year uh, in a lifetime and these cars are being taught from billions of miles collectively so it's many it's many thousands of lifetimes of driven experience that the car is driving with so that's why this is such a critical and uh, breakthrough technology because it scales across the whole fleet Every car is learning from all other cars in the fleet, which is growing exponentially as well. Oh yeah, and then the AI supercomputer at Tesla pushes out this software every week, every second week, to improve the driving capabilities of all the cars. And the result is that all of these cars get smarter every day because they share the experience of all other, all other Teslas. Okay. I hope that wraps it up and that uh, clears things up on how this technology basically works. Let's check out the ride. Okay. So we live. So we live. Okay, Jorge, so didn't blow knap there. It's uh, the blue button is the FSD supervised. <laughs> okay. I wait to see. Oh my god. So we can say. Are we doing English? Or yeah, yeah, we do English, it in English. English. So we can say that the car is driving itself but there is a Tesla employee in the driver's seat uh, because it is FSD supervised. So he is responsible for the car and has to take over if like anything happens during this ride. But right now it is just the car riding itself, which is pretty crazy to think about. What's your first impression, Joachim? How does it feel? Um, it feels... Safe. Actually, I feel at ease. I still had the the pleasure of trying the FSD in, in Austin as well. I went up there and rented a Cybertruck and drove it for three days throughout uh, Austin and Texas. So I know a little bit about the feeling, but it, it, it's it's profound how quickly you kind of develop sense <laughs> of ease and peace when you're, yeah. when you're driving. It but I also feel now when there's a person sitting in the driver's seat, it feels a lot like just being driven. But the crazy thing is in America, where there's actually like robo taxis going around with nobody in the driver's seat. That is, that is like, next that's next level. That feels like even more futuristic in a way. Yeah, so obviously this is kind of a push to raise public awareness around Denmark as well about the significance of this technology and us being a little bit into the, uh, the field and the technology knows how this is more like a, like a formality that you have to sit there of course for legal reasons still of course there's still some fine tuning of the, uh, the software taking place but it's just but I would say I would say that you're right that you get like it feels very natural. It, it feels like a person is riding the car. It doesn't feel like it's a robot 
writing itself, you know what I mean? No, no, it's, it doesn't make like weird... Uh, no, and the acceleration is smooth and the braking is smooth and like... If you, if you didn't know better, you would have thought that the person was... Yeah, yeah, it feels like the Tesla exactly. employee actually, is driving the car. The only thing that would have been giving it away is that it, it's actually maybe a little bit too smooth. Because it's, yeah. it knows exactly how it has to decelerate and accelerate to hit the stop signs and stuff. Yeah. And it's also interesting that we get it like in... It, my camera actually looks quite bright, but it is pretty dark out. And I think in the next ha half hour, it will get completely dark. So that is also interesting that I think a lot of people who are skeptic about the technology will say that, oh, it will not work in the snow or, oh, it will not work in the dark or when it's raining or stuff like that. But our, I think the way we see it is that if a human being can drive in those conditions, Hmm. Eight cameras and a supercomputer can also do the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when you see the, the videos from the states where they're driving through snow blizzards. Oh, and stuff, yeah. look, you look, really did you see that? Yeah. There was a big, a very yeah, big, yeah. very steep speed bump, and the car slowed down very naturally. Yeah. Like this is exactly how I would have done it. Like yeah, yeah, no yeah. difference. Sorry, you were saying? I was just saying those videos you see in, uh, from from the states where they drive through and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's just like super smooth and... But I think I saw another Danish YouTuber, uh, he posted a video earlier today, I think he was invited by the press. Um, and, and the funny thing is, I feel like the, the same is happening now, that it's quite uh, uninteresting to film and watch, because it's, it's so just... That it's boring. But that is quite because do you remember when they started the beta testing in America? Mm. How many years ago is that now? Two, three? Yes. Yeah, when you watch the videos from that in the beginning, the car would like it would it was very interesting to watch because because the car would make stupid mistakes all the yeah. time, and it was like oh my god, what is going on? And this is dangerous, and why is the is the car doing that? But now we are at a point. To watch. Now we are at a point where, yeah, you would almost be like having uh, sweaty hands just watching the videos. Yeah. But now we are at a point where all the FSD videos on YouTube are really boring because it is just like filming a car that drives itself very calmly and smoothly and confidently, like yeah. through different scenarios. Another thing that the, the typical skeptics here in Europe has been saying for a long time is, yeah, at my work in the States because they had 10 years to you know, train over there, but it, they'll never crack the European roads because they're so narrow and the streets are so tight and stuff. But this is just an obvious demonstration of how this technology is, is really transferable to any part of the world mm. and scalable throughout all environments yeah. and road conditions. It's funny, it's like, it's like a human being, you can also travel to uh, Costa Rica or Nicaragua or Thailand or somewhere so like that. Here. And then you can, you can, you will not be comfortable driving for the first couple of minutes, but your brain will adjust to the circumstances and you will be able to drive eventually. Oi, nice. Got it. Perfect timing. But, but that's the funny thing, like, it is just like a human being. You can yeah. put this software anywhere and it will figure it out. It's like, mm -hmm. if a human being can drive there, the software will also be able to drive there. Oh yeah, my. because it's a general solution, right? But it did you notice yeah. that it put the blinker on oh, to yeah. go? It's just a, a yeah. human wouldn't even do that. It's like more safe and more cautious than a human. It's pretty. It's Sorry, I interrupted pretty. you again. What were you saying? Yeah, but as Elon, he often points out that it is, it is really a general solution. So you can you have like these fundamental like aims or goals for the car, like get to this destination and do not crash. It's mm. actually pretty simple, even though it's super advanced. But that's kind of the, the general purpose of the whole of the software right mm. and then there are of course some minor variations from different regions and stuff but overall it's kind of the same thing you have one objective get to the destination and don't crash don't <laughs> drive into anything, anything yeah that's funny yeah because Waymo for example as we talked about earlier in the video yeah their approach is so different because they have all these sensors and they rely on the geofenced 3D maps as you said or the, uh, yeah, the maps so they can't just they can't do like Tesla is doing right here and like spontaneously do a, a live demonstration where for, for the public without having all the you you know the necessary pre-defined maps and stuff as they have in the states so 
that's, that's also what's so profound because this is this just scales across all regions as well. true but think if if this was your own car if this was your privately owned car and you were, were at work and now you wanted to drive home you mm. could just get in the car and press fsd supervised and then you could basically just i mean now you have to supervise the car but in a few i don't know month or maybe a year you can just the car will just drive you home so yeah. you can take a nap on your way home you can uh, you know do a little bit email you can uh, watch uh, tiktok sit on x you can do whatever you want you can just use your car as like a comfortable lounge to relax rather than like you know riding a car you have to do all these micro adjustments like are you in the right lane yeah. what are the other people doing uh, how how fast are you going what's the speed limit here but with it fsd takes a lot of your brain cycles when you're driving. yeah so you can just relax you can meditate you can i don't know you can do whatever you want so sure there's gonna be like a transition where you're gonna mm. like get used to have to get used to how it feels but as with all technologies that we've been talking a lot about that all of a sudden it feels like it's so like how, how the hell did you yeah, yeah. live without it yeah just a few months prior. We, we talked about it in the car going here like if you were to explain to someone living in the 1980s how much screen time we would have now and how attached we would be to our phones and just being reliable on the internet they would not in their wildest imagination be able to like fantasize the reality that we are living in now so it's just if you think five or ten or twenty years out in the future i mean it's just going to look so much more different than uh, than what is look what is it doing Let's slow it down. It's red. Can you can you explain something about the interface? It's different. Uh, look at how much information it has. Like. Oh yeah. The in general, I think the whole 3D visualization is yeah. also a lot higher detail than we're used to. But it's also imagine how much more detail it has than your eyes. And like it, it sees everything. It's like uh, in a in a 3D definition. So it's much more aware and has much more angles than we do as human beings. Another thing, touch the screen. But it is yeah. it is a bit different than when we use our own car. It looks a bit different with yeah. this one on. But for sure, you can see yeah, there are so many cars that you wouldn't be able to, to spot right away. I know, but it's it's got like a hold of all of them. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It looks really nice, and then we have our red car in the middle. And for for us enthusiasts, of course, I, I oftentimes forget because we follow the technology so closely. I often forget how. How few people they realize that this is yeah. this is gonna impact all of society, like in, in a very short amount of time. How how do you think it will impact society? I think it's gonna impact society in. Okay, in, this is interesting. Yeah, this is. I wouldn't even know what to do here. And we have some beautiful Christmas lights here in Curry. Oh, we are quite close to the edge here. It's interesting. <laughs> I hope it sees the poles. Oh. <laughs> It's this tight, yeah, but it is. It's actually a, quite a, a good example of a European. Yeah, road, small, road narrow road, road, yeah. Without the, you know, the lane markings. And yeah. there's like a, one of these uh, yeah, the low tight buildings. And but it feels very confident. <laughs> I would probably be a bit f f more to the center line than those signs in, in, in the out by the right, but it's doing well. I think as long as it's not hitting anything, right? Kyi is a nice city. Good Christmas atmosphere here. I can't wait to. And just look at all the people on the screen. Like it notices all the people. And if someone on the sidewalk were about to go out into the street, mm. the car would notice much quicker than you would notice. Yeah, that's bit sick as well. yeah. which is and there's a pedestrian on the on the. And all these people should. should yeah, they have no clue. They have no clue that this car is driving. This is also it stopped very no no. There's no sudden braking. It just no. it just it's very softly, very gently, just touch the brake pedal to make room for that car, That's and good. just navigates these tight corners. Very human like. It drives so much better than I do. I have to say. It does. I just drove with you, <laughs> but that's because. I'm too excited. You're too excited, yeah. No, but, um, I also think you are a terrific driver. Usually I'm okay, but... It's okay. 
what are we doing here? Is it, is it, maybe this is the end destination. I don't know if I mentioned, but our Tesla driver, he's not allowed to talk. So we have to be, I think this is like maybe the, yeah, yeah, that was the end destination. So now I'll just 